turn that off. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, go through some data, touch on a couple recent initiatives, and then take questions. Uh, sadly, we lost a member of the community uh, yesterday. Uh, Mel, 74 years of age, uh, certainly want to think about uh, him and his family and the 697 individuals we've lost directly related to COVID during the pandemic. Uh, positive rate, seven day rolling average, 1.4 and change, round, round up to 1.5. Uh, the daily positive rate, hopefully this trend will continue, uh, over the last two days was lower than the seven day average. So yesterday was about uh, 0.8 and change, round up to 0.9 and today it was 1.1%. Uh, so um, that's a good trend. Let's hope it continues to go that way. Uh, we now have 35,484 positive cases. Uh, identified since March 16th of 2020. Uh, that's 92 new cases. We currently have active cases, 715. Uh, so what's going on now with cases is you, you see direct correlations with vaccination uh, percentages, and we'll go through those uh, in, a, in a minute. Uh, and the demographics that have not been vaccinated, whether intentionally or uh, just because they haven't been eligible long enough to have completed series plus two weeks, uh, we're seeing cases. So our cases are gonna get younger and younger uh, as we go through this process and that's happening. Uh, and the other thing that's happened at the same time, and, and it's why uh, we're, we're very lucky that we've had the vaccine uh, really being rolled out since uh, the beginning of the year is that they are, there are various variants that have kind of taken over. And with the variants, whether it's the UK variant, the New York City variant, the California variant, uh, they are more contagious. Uh, so what we see now is you could have a situation where um, mom or dad or a guardian is vaccinated. They have a 19 year old, an 18 year old, a 16 year old in the house, but there's also two other children in the home. Um, highly likely if it gets in the house now, you're gonna have uh, everybody in the house get it. Uh, and so we see a lot of that right now. So. Um, we're going to continue to see as we make up ground with vaccinations uh, the residents of our community who haven't been vaccinated that's where this virus is going to be and it's going to continue to get younger um, looking at hospitalizations actually going in the right direction here today uh, 54 hospitalizations uh, we have 11 of our residents in the icu uh, so please keep them in your thoughts and prayers uh, the vaccine, so today we had a first dose of Moderna at the On Center. Uh, tomorrow we are going to be at the Liverpool High School, uh, vaccinating 16, 17, and 18 year old students uh, and staff if they want. Uh, we will also be at the Abundant Life Church tomorrow for a pop-up clinic. Um, and then next week's focus is next week we will have been in and or vaccinated every high school, public or private, in the county. Um, various days, what we've asked some of them to do is team up regionally, uh, and I wanna thank the superintendents uh, for doing that and uh, for the work they've done on that, uh, very helpful. Uh, and other large ones, we'll just go to those ones on different days, but we'll have different teams. Uh, we'll probably do a couple pop-up clinics based off of uh, updated zip code data, uh, depending on where where we're running light. There's our, there are zip codes that likely we have room for improvement uh, if we go into those neighborhoods. Uh, and then in addition to that, April 30th, uh, I think that's next Friday, not this Friday, uh, we'll have a Pfizer clinic here at the On Center. So going into May, we're gonna be going into zip codes and into neighborhoods. So uh, for, for first doses. So we'll, uh, we'll keep everybody posted on what we're doing there. Um, testing, uh, just a reminder, it's, this, this is the tool we've used to be successful. Look at where we are as a community compared to others. Sometimes I get uh, parents frustrated with me about testing protocols in schools. That's how we've kept schools open. That's how we've kept your kids playing sports is we find the virus. We don't let the virus sit there for a week or two undetected and knock out a complete team or a complete class, we find it, we isolate it, and we deal with it. Um, 
with our kids, the, the virus is going to continue to move towards our kids because they're not vaccinated. So uh, we need to watch for symptoms and we need to get the kids tested. So uh, parents, please, guardians, please uh, work with that. You, there's ample uh, uh, testing capacity at your urgent cares, well nows, the fairgrounds, community hospital, uh, doctor's offices. Uh, we have uh, asymptomatic testing, rapid testing, four days a week at the On Center, uh, and our asymptomatic community testing sites today, Onondaga Town Hall and Shove Park, uh, tomorrow, Clay Senior Center, and Fayetteville Village Hall. Uh, but overall, where we are is we're in a good spot. We, we've had uh, roughly 50% of the community uh, has been vaccinated. When you look at the numbers, uh, 64 to 65% of the eligible population, we are, I think it looks like we're seeing uh, cases drop a little bit. Um, and uh, I'm going to go over some vaccine percentages of participation. Uh, and when you look at the cases and these percentages, it tells the story. The vaccine works. Um, we need people to be the 226,000 people uh, going into today that have been vaccinated. We need you to be credible messengers with others in the community that are hesitant. And uh, if it's about uh, accessibility, because uh, they don't like the mass vaccination sites or uh, the drug stores and, uh, you, you know, reach out to us, uh, it's going to get to the point where we're uh, going to be in neighborhoods hunting for eligible participants. A couple other points before I go. Over. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go over these uh, vaccine stats first, then I'll go over these. So. This data is the best data we have right now for the county. Um, it will evolve and change, but 80 years and above right now, 71.6% have received the first dose and 60.4% have received the second dose. Um, to give you an, those are pretty good numbers, right? To give you an idea. We had nobody 80 to 89 today and one person. So one case 80 and above in Onondaga County today. Um, 70 to 79, very good numbers, 85.1% of the eligible population have received the first dose, 72.6% second dose. 60 to 69, 73.3, dose one, 56.8, completed series. 50 to 59, let's get, we've got some work to do here, 55.9% first dose, 34.2% second dose. 40 to 49, 47.6% first dose, 29.4% second dose. Your 40 to 49 demographic has not been eligible as long as your 50 to 59. Um, 30 to 39, 43.4% first, 26.2% second. 20 to 29, 36.9% percent first, 19.5 percent second, and our 16 and 19 year old demographic, 27.1 percent uh, first, 9 percent second. Uh, this is obviously a demographic that just became eligible. Um, there is absolutely direct correlations between participation levels over 70 and cases in the community every day. Um, again, the virus, as we vaccinate more of these eligible demographics, the, the virus is going to push into younger, uh, younger uh, folks, going to push into our kids more. Uh, we know that's going to happen. We just need to be ready for it. Uh, but overall, um, we're doing good. We just need to do better in these younger demographics. And our 50 to 59 demographic, we need to do better. Um, so our emergency rental assistance program is now on our website, the application. Um, over 1,600 applications have been submitted since Monday. And I know I've heard directly from some landlords that have tenants that have been probably skirting the COVID rules. I, we still ask that these landlords apply uh, on behalf of the tenant. We have various ways where we can check for other eligibility. Um, to try to help these landlords get resources. So I've heard from a lot of landlords that 
uh, have tenants that just haven't paid. Uh, they haven't been unemployed during COVID, the tenants. We know this is out there. We know it's a situation. I ask that you still apply and then we can use other tools to figure out if there's other eligibility to try to get you some relief. Um, so I ask uh, for help there. Uh, and our gift card program, probably the most successful program we've had outside of the vaccination um, when it comes to participation and quickly getting things done. Uh, May 9th and 10th, you gotta redeem the vouchers by then. If we have uh, money that has not been redeemed at that point, those vouchers will be disqualified. We will go back out to fill the remaining uh, dollar allotments uh, there as well. But uh, we've already heard from uh, many of the restaurants that people are already redeeming them uh, to the tunes of thousands of dollars. So. Uh, it's worked. It's a great thing for the restaurants. It's a great thing for uh, the taxpayer residents who pay taxes, and now they can get a little something more. Um, and certainly we'll look at a second round of this uh, moving forward as soon as we get through the first round and uh, work out any kinks in the program. So saying that, happy to take questions. Today's uh, positive case numbers, do you have those broken down by, by decade, uh, just so we can match them up with the uh, vaccination yeah. percentages? Yeah, so 0 to 19, 35 cases, 20 to 29, 21 cases, 30 to 39, 13, 40 to 49, 8, 50 to 59, 5. That's actually better for that. We've been seeing double digits in that uh, demographic for the last two weeks, so that's actually hopefully a good sign there. 60 to 69, five cases, um, 70 to 79, uh, four cases, 80 to 89, zero, 90 plus one. What, what age range needs the most work on vaccination rates? Yeah, um, I, I, I think overall, Everybody's doing okay. Uh, you know, I, I think 50 to 59, we can do better. Um, certainly when we look at the outcomes from hospitalizations, ICUs, loss of life, when we look at these younger demographics, that demographic there, we've seen uh, more loss of life than 40 to 49. So I, little concern there. I think we have some hesitancy in that these demographics. Um, the younger ones need a little bit more time to see if there's any alarming trends. Um, but the, what's great is, you know, 71%, that's a great number. 85% for the 70 to 79 is an excellent number. 73, 60 to 69, those are all excellent numbers. Uh, th those, those residents have uh, been very smart. They, these age demographics is, uh, are, are folks that don't do well with this virus. And so um, that really, really promising to see that. That 50 to 59 at 55.9, we got to do better. We got to get that in the 60s, 65, closer. Um, and then we got to see where the rest of these demographics go. Um, but it, you're going to see this get into the younger demographic right now. You're going to have unvaccinated folks get them. Kids are going to end up getting it from them because of how contagious it is now. Uh, tougher to isolate in a house when you have a positive in the house now. Um, so until kids get vaccinated eventually, I think this is going to be a virus that uh, if it's around here, it's hanging around in the younger demographics. Um, the state recently announced that certain sites of theirs would be walk-in. Is that something that the county has thought about? And do you have any plans to do that? Yeah, we'll probably do that with pods in the neighborhoods uh, first week of May. Is we'll, we'll go in, we'll work with credible messengers, work with other elected leaders, um, maybe even having folks knocking on doors, w looking at different things. We'll use reverse 911. Um, but yeah, it will be about, we're not going to worry so much about uh, how much vaccine's there. We, we, we know how to move this vaccine and we can be mobile uh, with that. So uh, certainly uh, we know it's going to be harder and harder to uh, get lots of shots in arms the traditional way. You talked about uh, when children get it, the family gets it, and uh, you know, children are the only group that really can't be vaccinated right 
now. Um, have you noticed or heard from school districts about their, because some districts have been reopened for a couple of weeks now, about their numbers and how they're doing? We know, so the districts are doing good. We're still doing testing in the schools. So what, what's happening, right, is you're going to get um, this, this kid got it, whether from playing a sport or socializing. Mm -hmm. uh, their brother gets it. The family gets tested. The family has it. Those kids aren't going into school, right? So the, the protocols don't let that happen. So we have not seen transmission in school. That's the goal of this. That's why we set up things we do, um, is so that transmission doesn't happen in the buildings uh, and that we are in-person learning. That's the number one goal. Extracurricular activities, number two goal. Um, so that right now, things are still working out. We had testing yesterday, uh, asymptomatic testing in schools. I think we had over 300 samples, and I think we had one. Um, so 0.19% uh, positive rate. So it's, the virus isn't transmitting in the schools. Uh, that's the goal. Um, again, we're still going to have cases uh, as, as long as it's here. Uh, what's changed now compared to when schools started is the, the adults have been vaccinated. And if the adults haven't been vaccinated, it's because they chose not to be vaccinated. So that's not an excuse for that adult, why they shouldn't be at work. Ryan, did we um, see any fallout in this county from that dance competition that, that uh, caused all the quarantines? Yeah, the so there? most of the, uh, the teams were not from the county. Um, I believe, and again, Ann can scream at me if I'm wrong, but uh, I believe we had one team from out of that county at that competition. And I have not been alerted of a case from that for out of that county. It's been widely reported that uh, photos twice now in four months from West Genesee High School of students doing the George Floyd challenge uh, have happened. I was wondering if you had a comment about that and how widely spread do you think this is? Because it can't just be West Genesee. Uh, I saw the photo. Uh, the photo is disturbing. Uh, the young person made a horrible mistake. Uh, and uh, the school district is going to have to deal with that. The parents are going to have to deal with that. Um, the, the, some of this is so big that you hate to see kids doing things that they, they don't understand sometimes. But it, it was a very big mistake made by the young man, uh, and the photo was very troubling. You mentioned on Monday um, that, that your attendance rate or your registration rate upstairs wasn't as strong as it had been in recent weeks. I'm wondering what the rest of the week panned out in terms of the clinic upstairs, and at what point do you think it reduced to once a week? So, we, we, yeah, I think, so today, <laughs> We've been here at 3 o'clock before, right, when it's just booming up there. It's not booming. Um, and so uh, right now we'll still have large clinics for second shots to get through um, that. But the, it's just going to be harder for, for this. Um, so when we have a large second shot day, I, my guess is April 30th. I haven't seen the schedule yet. My guess is we have a large second shot day for Pfizer. So we'll, do, we'll open up Pfizer appointments in a big way to see what the participation is. But this is going to be, uh, you know, a grassroots operation moving forward in the month of May. We're going to be in neighborhoods and uh, we're going to be uh, looking to work with businesses. Uh, you're going to, you know, our, our traditional ways of doing this are going to have to uh, adapt and evolve. And it's, we'll get to a point if we vaccinate 20 people in a day at some point, we had a good day. Um, you know, I think that's just the reality. Um, when they open up 12 to 15 year olds, we, 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 this exercise with working with the schools has worked very well. Uh, and so we'll uh, do that again, and that will be thousands of new vac vaccinations there. Uh, but until eligibility opens up, it's about bringing the, the vaccine opportunity to the neighborhoods and about trying to really identify folks who uh, are hesitant, truly hesitant, uh, that could be persuaded. I mean, at 60 to 69 range, you have about 27% fast math, um, more than a third in the 50 to 59, um, more than half in 40 to 49. If it's not hesitancy, what are people waiting for? It seems like there's a lot of people out there that could still benefit from a first shot. Those are you know, pretty large groups that haven't gotten anything yet. So what are people waiting for? Yeah, I think uh, you're going to, so 
if you think about um, this pandemic and where people stand ideologically on the pandemic, right? Um, your younger, more libertarian thinking individuals have different thoughts about the whole process, right? And so that's where we're going now. Uh, and um, these folks, for the most part, have not gotten as sick as their demographics um, of our seniors, right? Or comorbidities, right? So um, I think you see that. They think it's just, some people just think it's the flu, you know, something similar to the flu, and they, they don't feel it's necessary. And so, again, it's about, we know there's a percentage of the community we're never gonna get vaccinated. Uh, the good news is most epidemiologists think that we don't need them vaccinated if we can get to everybody else. And so uh, we'll keep working every day um, to get you know people this vaccine. Um, and if it means going on, into their neighborhood on their street, that's what we're gonna do. So it's not so much hesitancy because that ind indicates a fear of the actual product of the yeah. vaccine. It's, it's opposition that this was a big deal to begin yeah, with. Yeah, I think there's ideology involved. I think there's folks, some folks just don't get vaccines, right? And so, uh, you know, it, it, that is what it is. And, and we're not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here in, on a soapbox and uh, spend an hour trying to convince somebody why they viewed this whole pandemic wrong. Um, we've been dealing with a lot of this over the whole thing. Uh, and I respect that. I respect people's liberties and their, this. What we gotta do is there's enough people out there that we can get uh, shots in arms to, to get to our herd immunity. Um, without some of those residents. You've always been a competitive guy. What's your percentage goal for this county? Yeah, I, I think you got to get to 70. Um, you know, I, I'd like to get there first. Uh, and so, uh, you know, but if I get there, I think we still got the job done. But I think 70 is the number. I don't think you can get there until you open up the 12 to 15 year old uh, eligibility. Um, but we're, we're getting pretty close. I mean, I mean, I, I think by the end of this week, we'll be over that 65% of the eligible populations, that 230 number. Uh, and then, you know, if we can make up that extra 5%, I think we're gonna have, a, a, between that and then the weather is gonna certainly help as people are outdoors. Um, I think we're gonna be in a nice spot. If we're at almost 65, 70 seems low to me as a goal. Well, you remember, it's got to be 70 the whole community, right? So eventually your 70 today is going to drop off as more eligibility comes, comes through. Um, but if the epidemiologists kind of start to lean to a higher number based off of the data, then that's where we got to get to. Uh, Onondaga County Sheriff's deputies do not wear body cameras. With the new influx of government money, has there been any thought put into equipping Onondaga County Sher uh, Sheriff's deputies with body cameras? Yeah, so part of our, uh, our community-wide dialogue on uh, looking at various reforms with how the law enforcement community engages with the public themselves, uh, when we looked at our law enforcement agency, so ours is different, right? So the mayor, has a police chief that he he appoints. I am an elected official and so is the sheriff. And then I propose funds and policy. The legislature ratifies that or changes that. So the legislature traditionally is where, and I was the former head of the legislature, so that's traditionally where the real accountability happens for the sheriff. Um, what we are doing and, and out of this process, what my goals are out of this, this community dialogue that we had was one, I'm gonna put funding in for body cameras in my 2022 budget. Uh, two, we're gonna address uh, the diversity uh, issue within the sheriff's department and, and work with, our, with Monica Williams and our team uh, to recruit more candidates uh, to enter into these fields. And the third piece, which is really, I think, the most critical, and we're gonna look at this comprehensively from, for every police department in the county, is accreditation. Is the, these uh, departments are getting the best tools and the best practice and the best training so that they can do their jobs well and they can be safe. And if that's happening ongoing, uh, then we're going to be in a really good spot as a community. So those are my three goals uh, moving forward out of this process. There will be money in the budget. Uh, 
and I believe then uh, that kind of will settle that issue. Then the, then the legislature, uh, I'm going to guess, is going to agree with me, and then the sheriff will need to implement a program, and we may need to negotiate some of this with the bargaining unit uh, too. So these are all things that we negotiate with the bargaining unit. These are all things that are goals of mine, so we'll be working on that. Has the sheriff seemed open to the idea of having his officers to focus on? Yeah, I mean, we've had some discussions. I, I, I think uh, at this point, um, that's where this needs to go, for the benefit of the deputy uh, and for the public at large. Um, there's a lot going on, and there's a lot of pressure uh, on these deputies. and. Uh, I know if it's me, that's a tool that uh, if I'm in an incident and I, I implement the policies and the training that I'm supposed to and there's a, there's a bad outcome, I'd want that, that record to show I did my job. So I think this protects the deputy and it instills confidence in the public. Ryan, some of the, some of the restrictions on um, arena crowd size Yeah, I do. Uh, I think the what we'll see. I, I think it's going to just get better, Tim. Um, the state knows. Other states are going to loosen up pretty quickly on the outdoor venues, almost to the point of full capacity, is my understanding in the Northeast. So, I think the state's going to have to move with that, um, or we'll be we'll be at a competitive disadvantage. Um, but. It's all a step in the right direction. It'd be nice if some of the rules and regs, there's a little bit more transparency on the thought process behind it. Um, I, I think even if you had vaccination percentages, this percentage, you get this much capacity at these venues, whatnot, even if you don't agree with the metrics, similar to how we had restart, at least you know what the metrics are and you work towards those goals then. Uh, but I do believe we'll have an amphitheater season some of the, as Live Nation makes some of the announcements, I know the Dave Matthews Band concert got uh, pushed back a little bit. Um, you're probably not gonna see June shows. We're probably gonna see shows late July, August, September, October. Um, and so that will be good. We're gonna, people are gonna be back out at the amp and they're gonna be enjoying uh, you know, a world-class facility that we haven't been able to really be at in a while. Uh, I think the Syracuse Mets, we're gonna work with the Syracuse Mets on testing. Uh, so that people can go and see that new facility, remind the community. Um, this facility is phenomenal. Uh, you, it's about an experience now, not a baseball game. So I encourage the public to really get out with your family uh, to uh, see a Mets game. Uh, I think that will get better. We're going to be too late for the crunch. Um, the, I think their last home game is mid-May. Uh, but I think you could see st things... Uh, start to pick up at th theaters locally and whatnot. So uh, hopefully we'll get things rolling again here summertime. I know you don't control this, but do you think there's any hope of a state fair this year? I, I don't control it. It's, it's, it's this, literally the state's fairgrounds and the governor, that is his call. He takes uh, your phone call. Yeah, yeah. Look, at they love me some days, that's for sure. Um, but the uh, I think, uh, I do. I, I think we'll figure out a way. It may be different. It may be limited. Uh, but I do think they do want to figure out a way to, to do it, and I know that their team is working on it. Uh, getting back to the restaurants thing really quickly, um, did you guys follow where that money was, or where that money went, where that money was spent, um, what restaurants it was spent at? So how this works is the, the vouchers are one thing. It's, that's how we know when to shut the program off. Um, what matters is the redemption of the vouchers. So how we will know is restaurants will be forwarding these vouchers that have a unique identifier um, and we'll then be able to track what restaurants, how much money they redeemed through that. And then you have till May 9th and 10th to redeem it. So if you don't redeem it and we go through that and on May 17th, we know that, that there's $75,000 worth of vouchers that never got redeemed. We will go back out to the community for the 75,000 and it will take about two hours or an hour for it to be gone. Um, and then we'll go through that process again. 
um, but redemption is is the data we're waiting for, um, not necessarily the vouchers. Uh, there was, I think, nine thousand vouchers that were downloaded. So we just got to see see where that uh, how that plays out. When you say you're thinking about a second round, or do you mean a second round of another five hundred thousand? Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Maybe more. Um, we'll we'll see. Uh, it's we, I, Tim, I thought it was a good idea or else we wouldn't have did it, but it turned out it was a really good idea because uh, everybody else agreed quickly. So um, we were taken back by the success of it uh, and quickly. And I know some people were frustrated they didn't get them. And I can tell everybody I did not get a voucher. That would have, that'd be like insider trading if I got it. So I didn't, I didn't participate. Um, but we want to get it back out there as well for those who didn't have an opportunity to uh, uh, get one. Is there any concern that, and I don't even know how this would work, but this comes from my newsroom. Is there any concern that anybody was taking advantage of this in any way illegally or trying to take money in some way? I don't know. I mean, the only, so the only way that we reimburse is with the voucher and the, and the unique number. So um, I, I, don't, I don't believe there's been enough time where some hacker could try to identify it. You, you never say never, right? But... Uh, right now, uh, the, it's a weekly redemption from the restaurants. And so, we've, again, when, when, we, when we looked at the quality controls here, we worked with people in the industry who understand how things work. We, we debated various ways. Uh, we have our finance team, the, the, the county comptroller, uh, actually cutting checks uh, as well. So there's various, various quality controls in place to make sure that uh, fraud uh, does not happen. Um, I would hope that people won't try anything, but we all know sometimes that happens. What's your favorite restaurant? I love them all. All 180 of them that participated. You thought you had me. Yeah. Anything else? All right, folks. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see everybody on uh, Monday.